What's up everybody, this is Mudcat here from 2XP Gaming, uh, and I just was going to talk to you guys today about being better in Halo. Um, Alright, more specifically Halo 5, and I think this will be a kind of a two-part series. Um, it may also show up on our our, our podcast, the, uh, the Spartan Talk, um, as well as our YouTube here. Uh, just depends on on what I think. I might I might throw it onto both. Um, but let's go ahead and, and talk about Halo Five. If if you're if you're watching this, you probably uh, are a more casual player, or maybe a player that is a lower level, but you'd like to get more serious at Halo, um, and you're looking for some tips or some tricks. Um, now you know this isn't going to be a video where I'm going to say, hey, do this one thing, and you're going to be so much better. You're going to be a pro player or uh, you know, even if you do all these things, you may never be a pro player. But uh, I certainly am not a pro player, and and I don't uh, I don't contend to know everything there is about Halo. But uh, I've spent a lot of time playing, and I've I, you know I've picked up some tricks and some some general knowledge that I think will help, especially a lot of beginning players. Um, will really will help you to not be that guy on your team that is the random that everybody is screaming about, right? Everyone's been there where you're the weak link on the team and maybe you feel like you're letting them down or they're telling you you're letting them down. <laughs> they're letting you know. Um, either way, that's no fun. And, and this is, a, you know, Halo's a fun game and it needs to be fun. All right. And so that being said, how do you make it fun? Well, winning helps, right? Everybody wants to win. Um, but, you know, how do you win? You want to be competitive at your skill level. So whether you're a Gold 3 or an Onyx or a Champion... What's fun is is those are those games that are 49 to 40 to to 48, you know, and then 49 49, 49 50. Um, those are the intense games, the fun games, especially when you come on, out on top. Uh, and so you want to be competitive, and so that's what we're going to talk about here. Um, this will probably get split up into two parts, kind of a an individual, what you can do individually, and then what you can do once you get with a team. That'll probably be the second the second episode or the second part here. Uh, and so let's go ahead and start talking about what you can do as an individual that will make you a better all-around Halo player. All right, so th these are in no specific order. These are just some, some general thoughts and, and topics I wanted to discuss. Um, first off, use all the weapons, okay? You'll never become a good sniper if you never pick up the sniper, okay? I know that when you're playing, maybe if you're in an arena... Um, and you're playing with some kids who are really trying to to win and to, to do well, uh, maybe in that situation you don't pick up the sniper because there's a better sniper on the team. But at some point, whether it's in like you know a casual game of Slayer or if it's in Warzone or somewhere, you need to you need to pick up every weapon. And I keep saying sniper because usually that's the weapon that people are like, oh no no, I don't touch the sniper because uh, I'm terrible at it. Is usually the the thought process, okay? Um, but you gotta touch every weapon. You gotta touch the sniper. You gotta touch the needler. You gotta touch the the fuel rod. The everything. You have to know how these weapons work um, because they can be in invaluable in game, okay? Uh, if if the enemy team, you know, if you killed their sniper, uh, you need to pick that sniper up, or someone on your team does, so that that they don't get that weapon. Uh, and you need to utilize it to your advantage to control the map. Uh, and so if you're having issues where you don't feel good enough, you, you need to spend some time touching those weapons. And you're going to suck at first with some of those weapons, probably. Uh, and that's just the way it goes, but you're not going to get better by avoiding them. Okay? Uh, so use all the weapons. That'd be a first first point I'd like to make. You know, this is a, this is a game. It's it's not real life. If someone's screaming about you at you about having a sniper, just, you know, give them the finger and move on. Use what you want to use. Um, second point, this is probably one of the biggest points, one of the most key points here in this section here, is stop being so aggressive, okay? I see it time and time again, and I'm, trust me, I am very guilty of this. Uh, I'll tell you how guilty of this I am. I'm currently, according to Halo Tracker, number 258 in the world in grenade kills. Uh, or sorry, not, not grenade kills, melee kills. So that tells you how, we'll get to grenade kills later, uh, well, that tells you that I am... You know, at a lot of times, a very aggressive player. Um, 
And sometimes that's a great thing. In, in some in some instances, in some game modes, some situations, being aggressive or having an aggressive player on your team can be very good. Um, in other situations, you know, and I found myself on this end multiple times, um, being too aggressive gets you into a lot of problems. It gets you into traps with multiple enemies. Um, you know, it gets you detonated. It gets you all sorts of shenanigans that happen when you decide to get up in someone's face and beat them down. Um, and, and even not beat down. Stop being aggressive in general. You know, slow down. Slow down. We'll get to slow down here in a second, but uh, stop being aggressive. If a guy has a, has a shotgun in the room, stop running into the room. Don't be so aggressive. Okay, that's that's probably one of the biggest tips you can you can ever take away from from this because a lot of times you know people are too aggressive uh if you're winning 30 to 15 you don't need to be pushing the other team you don't need to be finding them okay what you need to do at that point is as a team find somewhere to hold up and you let them come to you because they have to come to you if they want to win all right, um, so don't be so aggressive. And we're going to kind of continue with this theme here of the aggression. Again, I said it before, but slow down, okay, especially in your shooting. Uh, and this takes some practice. The pistol is not a weapon where you can just, you know, bam, 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 spam the, the trigger as fast as you want and all those bullets come out. Uh, there is a, a pacing to the gun. There is a reticle. And it won't let you fire. You know, there's a, there's a certain time period where, where it be between bullets. Uh, and so you need to learn that pacing for every weapon and use it. You know, instead of just trying to spam that trigger because you just got jumped by somebody and now you're all flustered and you have a lot of adrenaline going, just take a breath and try try to see if you can hit that nice and steady, uh, you know, four or five shot, depending on whatever whatever weapon you're using. Just, just pop, 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 pop. You know, find that pacing. And I guarantee you, when you slow down and you don't get so worked up, you're going to you're going to kill a lot more people that way because you're not going to make stupid mistakes because you're trying to to hurry up and finish the kill. Okay? So so pace those shots, slow down. Uh, another thing with slowing down, not being so aggressive that kind of ties in here, stop detonating. Okay? You lose valuable time to to make those shots when you detonate. Um, by dropping that nade at your feet, you think you've already given up. You've given up on the battle. Um, you say, oh, I'm going to die. Let's see if I can take him with me. That's what you're saying. Uh, and in a lot of times, that's not the case. You know, you could have outplayed that person. If you had slowed down, paced your shots, you could have outshot that person easily. Or you could have hung back, not been so aggressive, and, and waited on the beatdown or not done the beatdown at all. Uh, and you could have lived, right? I'm guilty of that. Everyone's guilty of that. Um, but the death nade is just a sign of I've given up. <laughs> I don't know how to fin you're saying I don't know how to finish the kill. Uh, I'm not going to try to finish the kill. I'm done. Um, is basically what it says. Now, as you get better, so just stop oh first, just stop the death nades. Don't do them. Stop them completely. Don't do them. Um, now as you get better and you're more acquainted with how the grenade works and you've played with the grenade a little bit and you understand the balancing you understand how to bounce a grenade behind you, how to bounce them around the corners, you've practiced maybe some grenade bounces, then, you know, then you get in a situation as you gain more experience that you realize and you can recognize, okay, he got the jump on me, there's no way I'm finishing this kill. Now I can do an appropriate death nade that I've practiced, you know, and, and maybe I'll come away with the kill, you know, at least trade. Um, but until you get to that point and you feel comfortable, uh, I wouldn't. I would just stay away from them because it's going to form a bad habit where you're just going to pull that trigger and drop that nade at any old time, and you're going to lose valuable seconds that you could be uh, placing headshots or body shots. Um, you know, and it takes a long time to get good with grenades. Um, and I'm speaking here from experience. I use a lot of grenades, uh, and again, we'll go back to Halo Tracker. 438th in the world for grenade damage and 588th for for grenade kills. So, you know, I'm not number one in grenade kills, but I'm under the top thousand by a good 500 here. Um, so, you know, I've had a lot of experience with grenades and I'm, I'm fairly successful with grenades. 
Uh, and they can be a good tool, you just have to know how to use them and when to use them. Um, death nade is not when you use them. All right. Uh, additionally, let's keep moving on here. Learn the callouts. This is something you can do individually as you're playing the game or in customs. Go over the maps, learn the callouts. They're in the bottom left hand corner under the radar now. So there's really no reason not to have a general map awareness of where things are and what they're called. Uh, additionally, and this might take a little bit more time, go into some custom games. Spend five, ten minutes on a map. Learn some jumps. Learn some, some new tricks, some new places you can get to, some new routes. Okay, don't always take the same route or the same jumps. Uh, and even if you learn some jumps that you're not going to use during the game, it's nice to be aware of them because now when, when you're playing the enemy, say on oh, I don't know, Plaza, and, and somebody's at, at Top Sniper and you're pinching him, well, you can actually jump on that electrical box and get into the loft above uh, Sniper, and you need to know that, you know, maybe that's the route that guy took to escape when you're pinching him. So maybe you toss a nade up there, maybe he's crouched up there hurt. Um, you know, toss a nade, you know, knock on the door, see if someone's home. Uh, so being aware of those jumps and being aware of the callouts make you such a better player and, and all these things are great but if you if you were to implement just a couple of these things or one or two of these things this these are gonna make you so much better um, than you already are you're gonna see great skill increases um, another thing here while you're in customs is you can practice kill techniques okay you can learn how many headshots it takes with a certain weapon you can learn how many body shots it takes with a certain weapon uh, you can learn if you prefer to go strictly for the head or, as most people, you know, they like to pop body shots because it's easier to hit the body and then finish with the headshot. You can learn those things for yourself uh, and see what works for you. All right, and so I'd probably say, kind of we've, we've talked about here about uh, being not being aggressive, slow down, you know, learning a few callouts, jumps, practice the kills. Um, overall, this comes down to, you know, kind of one topic, though, is to think. You know, that's, that's a big rule here. If you take nothing away from any, any of this except for this one point, always be thinking. Okay, this is not, I know it seems like it because it's guns and explosions and punching people in the face and assassinations. This is not a fist fight. This is not a, a, a knockdown, drag out uh, brawl where it's just run and gun. That's not what Halo is. Halo is a strategy game. Okay, You may not see it that way, but you need to see it that way if you want to be successful. Halo is a strategy game. It's it's chess, or maybe it's checkers. I don't know. Okay, It's a strategy game, so you need to treat it like that and be thinking. And what I mean by that is don't make stupid mistakes. Okay, um, For instance, let me give you some scenarios here. Don't rocket a, a one-shot person. Okay, if a guy is one shot, his shields are popped, don't waste a rocket. Okay, those rockets are invaluable um, to gaining a lead, especially if you're in an evenly matched game. You have to hold those rockets. Don't waste them. Okay, you fought hard to get them, don't waste them. Uh, if that guy's one shot, pull out your pistol that you've practiced with, pop him in the head. Just a nice timed shot, and you've got it. Okay, because he's one shot, he's probably freaking out, you know, that he's trying not to die. You come in nice and calmly, pop a headshot, dead. You don't need to waste a rocket. Another scenario here, um, if you're, say, let's let's say Empire. If, if the guy in the tower is hiding in the shotgun room or in the tower or in the shotgun ramp, don't rush that area. You're not going to beat that guy one-on-one -on -one if he's any good with a shotgun. Um, I was playing Big Team Battle yesterday, and I was, you know, I was holding a midpoint at tower, uh, crouched with a shotgun. It had about, they delivered me about 20 shots on their shotgun. They brought their shotgun to me. Um, and they knew I was in there, but they still proceeded to charge in one after another, you know, four in a row, one, two, three, four, overkill. Easy. Um, you know, so, so if you've got, or if you're, or if you're facing people with a power weapon, um, don't be stupid. Just think. If you were to think before you rushed in there and tried to AR the guy to death, hey, let me toss a couple nades. Let us uh, let me get with a teammate. Maybe we strike from two sides. Something like that. You know, Try to think things through before you do them. Uh, and try and try, try, try to avoid two-on-ones, three-on-ones, four-on-ones. Four on yes, double kills happen. Double kills don't happen 
when you see two other guys face to face and they team shot you. It doesn't happen. Okay, um, you're not going to one v two, one v three, one v four. There may be you know once in a blue moon where that happens, but generally speaking, you're not going to win that. Okay, so don't if there's a room with three guys in there and you're alone, don't rush in with the AR. It's not going to work out. Okay, uh, and even if it does. It, you know, the other times it's not going to. So so just don't do it. Don't learn bad habits. Don't teach yourself bad habits. And if you have, by using your brain, you can unteach yourself these bad habits. Okay, so going along with thinking, um, kind of the one of the last points we're going to talk about here is uh, be disciplined. All right? I don't know how many times I've played with people, and even I've told them while we're playing, be disciplined, stay put, don't move. Uh, and what do they do? They move and they ruin the setup. Okay, we'll talk about setup in the next section and, and, and team play and kind of controlling maps. But um, for instance, on truth, if you know if you've got the setup and, and you're you're forcing their spawns, uh, it's not necessarily always the most fun thing to hang up, hang out at, at top mid and top car and and top P and, and, and just pick those guys off at their spawn. But um, you know, I don't understand how how people would prefer to go trade a trade a melee kill, um, or maybe just run in and die. Uh, so sometimes you just have to be patient. You have to sit back. You have to stop being aggressive, and you have to be disciplined. Disciplined enough to know that if you sit at a certain spot, they're going to spawn at a certain spot, and you cannot move from that spot. All right, you have to stay there, um, and so discipline goes a long, long way in, in Halo. All right? And, and so thinking, discipline, using these callouts, there's a lot of stuff we've talked about here. Um, and so definitely, if you missed something or you thought something was a good point, go back and, and, and re-listen to it. Um, the last thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about here, because I see it on Twitch in the chats all the time, what, what, uh, what, pl- what control scheme do you use? Okay, they ask pros all the time, what control scheme do you use? Uh, and let me just go ahead and tell you this. Nobody has your hands. Nobody has your brain. Figure it out for yourself. Okay, I use Recon because it is the closest thing to default Halo, and my brain will not let me learn another control scheme for Halo. It just won't. I can play another control scheme for Destiny or for other games. Perfectly fine. No big deal. But my, but this uh, the classic Halo control scheme is so ingrained in my brain that I play Recon, uh, and now I have an elite controller, and I use the paddles, but I use them situationally. So if I'm in a fight and I need to jump, I'll use the paddle instead of the the A button because I know it's faster and I've practiced with it. Uh, or I'll use the the B uh, paddle for a ground pound so that I don't have to hold B with my thumb and then try to use both sticks with one hand, which is not fun. I've tried that. Um, Okay, and and so you have to learn for yourself. If you're in a more of an aggressive player, you want a higher sensitivity. Um, Again, we've talked about being aggressive, and and if it doesn't work for you and you die a lot, turn that sensitivity back down, grab an AR, or not an AR, grab a BR, um, grab a a DMR, grab a sniper, you know, and sit back and don't rush in. You know, if and that's that's that. So um, I play about a four sensitivity. I know even though I said, you know, figure it out for yourself, some people are still going to ask. Uh, so I play a recon about force sensitivity. Uh, but if I'm feeling aggressive, if I have a day where I'm like, I'm just going to run a gun and I'm going to be aggressive and I'm going to be the aggressive guy on my team, I'll kick that up to a six. Uh, because for me, I, I if I'm going to be more aggressive, I need to be able to look around faster and kind of cover my own back. Um all right, so these are just some general skills, some general knowledge, really, not even skills, um, some things you can think about or practice or or learn that might help you get a little better individually, and you can do those on your own. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and make a second part to this where, you know, once you've kind of got that individual side down and, or you're thinking about some of those things that you can apply them to team play, uh, all right, so... If, if you've liked this video, you can go ahead and, and subscribe. We'd, we'd appreciate that. Or you can follow us on Twitter at 2XPGaming. Um, all right. Well, we will see you in the next episode.